God granted me a miracle tonight. He saved my baby. Yeah. And I was really scared for a while there. I don't know what I would have done if I lost him. I knew that I loved him. I just never knew how much. I lost Ethan tonight. But I still have my beautiful little boy. How is it possible to be so full of joy and so sad at the same time? This was a good idea. I'm just tired from all the excitement of today. I feel so bad that I didn't believe that there was anything wrong with Teresa's baby. I really thought that it was just another ploy for her to drag you away from me. No, no. Little Ethan really was in bad shape. But he is okay now, right? <sighs> Dr. Russell said he'll be fine. Good. I'm glad. But now that the emergency is over, we can pick up where we left off. And I believe that you were about to ask me something. Well, first things first. Now that little Ethan has fully recovered, a toast to a new beginning for all of us. Does your head hurt me? Are you dizzy at all? No, I'm all right, really. But I know why you're worried, Mama. Sheridan all but told me about a medical condition and then it could kill me. I told you. But Mama, I don't want you to worry, okay? I'm happy. I have a wonderful life. I have a wonderful woman that loves me. And no matter what happens right now, I'm happy. Sheridan loves me and only me. No matter what happens down the road, I'm going to be perfectly fine because I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I had shared it in my life. Antonio, you wanted to talk to me before I took off. Yeah, yes I did. Um, Sheridan told me about my medical condition. Oh. Let's see. Then you understand how important it is that you stay calm how important it is that you don't let yourself get worked up over anything. Yeah, you know, I'll do my best, but I have a right to know, Doctor. How long do I have? I can't give you an exact date, Antonio. That's not fair, Doctor. I know. I know it isn't fair. Look, I'm on my way back to the hospital. If, if you'll stop by in a little while, I'll run some new tests. I'll, I'll pull out your files and we can look them over together and assess the situation. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Mama, come on, cheer up. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm, I'm, I just told you I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Sheridan loves me and only me, and that's all that matters. Well, I guess you're wondering what I'm doing here. I heard about Teresa's baby. Of course. You'll be glad to know he's doing much better. Eve Russell said he's going to be okay. Oh, well, thank God. Well, can I go up to see him? I don't see why not. Okay. Oh, if you were going upstairs to see your sister and your nephew, you might want to wait a few minutes. Teresa just put the baby down and he needs his rest. All right. However long it takes. Okay, very good then. You know, I'm going to get you both some coffee in the meantime.
What a night. Thank God it's almost over. Everyone is safe and sound. You know, that's how I feel now that we're okay again. Safe and sound. I'm so sorry about David. No, no, no. Listen, it's, it's, don't worry about it, okay? But we never have to doubt one another again. As long as we're completely honest with our feelings, nothing and nobody will ever come between us. Tabitha, you're right. I should just tell Charity the truth. Miguel's so crazy about her, why'd he make love to me, right? You're absolutely right, Kay. People are always going on about truth and honesty. Well, I say, let the truth ring out. And once Charity knows the truth, then Miguel will be mine. You know, I, I have my car right here. I could drive you over to the hospital now. Oh, Tabitha, would you? <gasps> that would be great. I'm just gonna go pay my bill. Once Charity hears that Miguel made love to Kay, all hell will break loose. <sighs> oh, I wonder where ever is that cracked Connie and her dummy boyfriend, Cecil. Well, wherever they are, I'm sure they're up to no good. So you really think I should tell Charity the truth? It's your only hope for a happy marriage, Miguel. Lies and deceit tear relationships apart. They damage the hearts of the liars and the deceivers. Tell Charity the truth. Trust God and the love you and Charity share. If you don't, if someone else tells her the truth before you do, it could damage a relationship beyond repair. I don't understand. Why would the truth hurt me? You want to tell her, or can I? Let me. It's like this, Blondie. Miguel, got it on with your cousin Kay. Got it on? They did the nasty, honey. <laughs> or to put it more delicately, Miguel gave her a ride on his private merry-go-round. Catch my drift? <laughs> no! I wish I knew. I was out in the hall with Father Lonnie and she just started screaming. It's all right, okay? We're here now. Nothing's gonna hurt you. Ugh. No, you have got to calm down. Take deep breaths. Come on, easy does it. Charity, what happened? Why are you so upset? Well, something made her blood pressure shoot way up. Her heart's beating much faster than it should. Charity, please. You're scaring me. Is it true? Is what true? Is it true that you made love to Kay? Excuse me. I'm not against Kay. I'm, I'm here to see Charity. You can't come in. She's not feeling well. 
Oh, for Pete's sake, Father Lonigan. She's my cousin. I'm sure she wants to see me. I said not now, Kay. Who are you with? Uh, no one. Father, why do you ask? I sense evil very close by. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Sam, we can't. Grace. We're not, we're not really married. Look, maybe not in the eyes of the church. But you are my wife. You always were and you always will be. I miss making love to you, too. to a complete station house. <sighs> Chief Bennett. All right, I'm on my way. It's Charity. She's at the hospital. She's in trouble. Let's go. You've just come home to me, son. I cannot bear the thought of losing you again. Don't cry, Mama. Just be glad for me. I've never been happier than I am right now. But I don't no, know. look. I have you. I have Luis. I have Teresa. I have Miguel all back in my life again. I'm in love with the most beautiful woman in the world, so there's no sense of dwelling on the negative. I have so much to be thankful for. Where are we going? We're gonna go find Sheridan. I wanna spend every last minute I have with her. Well, I'm glad that things are <clears throat> working out between you and Antonio. You are? Yeah. No matter what happens, your happiness matters the most to me. It's going to be tough having you as a sister-in-law, but uh, I'll try and adjust. It's not like I had a choice, you know. I'll just think. We're about to be one big, happy family. Listen to Luis, Mama. There's nothing to be sad about. We're all together now, and we're happy, and that's all that matters. I know how much you love Ethan, and how hard you fought to keep him, but at least your baby is safe and sound. That's what I keep telling myself, it. It's all worth it. <laughs> Little Ethan's life in exchange for you giving up a future with Ethan. No. No, that's, that's not exactly what I said. You said you weren't going to come between Ethan and Gwen, Teresa. If that's what Ethan wants. Of course that's what Ethan wants. He bought an engagement ring for Gwen. He would have already proposed to her if you would have kept interrupting them. Face it, Teresa, no. It's all over except the I do's. How can you say that, Whitney? I, I mean, how do you know that Ethan is actually going to propose to Gwen? What if he hasn't? Hmm? Wouldn't that be a sign from God that I still have a chance with him? See, here you go again. Grasping at straws when the truth is staring you right in the face. I have no doubt in my mind that Ethan is probably proposing to Gwen right now. And that she's saying yes. You seemed so intent on telling me something before Teresa's baby got sick. 
said it had something to do with us and our future? It did. It does. Are you all right? I hope that um, he's as special for you as he was and always will be for me. This bear is always going to remind me of that night. Earth to Ethan. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm just on overload, I guess. Well, I completely understand after everything you've been through the past 24 hours. Gwen. You, you know I want you to be happy, don't you? Of course. I want you to be happy, too. I, um, I think we should call it a night. What? Well, you know, uh, so much has happened today. It's been such a long day. Um, I think we should start fresh in the morning, get some sleep. Where'd you get the idea that I made love to Kay? The kids in the costumes, Miguel, they came in and they said that you did, and then I had a vision of it happening. What kids? The, the trick-or-treaters, only they came in and they said they were telling me the truth. They were just here. I didn't see them. And neither did I. Look, are, are you sure you didn't imagine these kids being in your room? No! They were real! And they acted like they knew what they were saying. And they told me you slept with Kay. <sighs> okay. Charity, you have to calm down or you're going to damage that new heart of yours. Please, Charity, listen to Dr. Russell. But I need to know, Miguel, is it true? I'll be right back, okay? I promise. Excuse us, Father. I thought I told you not to tell Charity that we slept together. I know I didn't. Yeah, well, somebody did, okay? And now our new heart could give out. You sure you didn't just let it slip out? I just got back here, Miguel. How could I possibly have had anything to do with it? I don't know, all right? I just assumed it was you because Charity said that it was two kids in costumes, and that doesn't make any sense. Well, what do you know? Cracked Connie and Cecil, no doubt. I don't get it. All right, why would two kids come into Charity's room out of the blue and tell her that we slept together? Miguel, I already told you. I don't have any idea. I want to believe you. I knew it. Kay's behind Charity's crisis. What did you do to her, Kay? <sighs> and when Kay's innocent, she gets blamed. <laughs> Talk about motivation to do evil. I really hate to disappoint you, Mother, but I don't have anything to do with what's wrong with Charity. But I thought that... Yeah, I know what you thought. The same as you always think, that everything that happens around here is my fault. Oh, oh no, listen. Your mother didn't mean to accuse you of anything, right? <laughs> Let's talk over here so we don't disturb your cousin. Come on. Yeah. Miguel, what's going on? Charity just got upset about something, and, and then her blood pressure went way up, and then her monitor started going off. But Dr. Russell's in there with her right now. And Kay, you weren't anywhere near your cousin when no, she got upset? No, Mom, I wasn't anywhere near her. It's just that, Miguel, I saw the way you were talking to Kay when we came in. And you thought she had something to do with it too, right? Grace. Dad, it's all right. This is how Mom always talks to me when you're not around. Didn't you know Jessica's your good daughter? And I'm the evil one who's responsible for everything that goes wrong around here. But it's all right, really, I'm used to it by now. Mom loves everyone else a thousand times more than she's ever loved me. I knew I was in the presence of great evil. Oh, no, 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 
Louise. Stay calm. Well, I'm glad Teresa's baby is doing much better. Yeah, so am I. I was pretty touch and go there for a while. You know what? It's late. You really should get some rest. Well, there's plenty of time for that. Right now, I just want to talk to my brother a second. Uh, well, of, of course, but what's it about? Just take a minute. Uh, if you'll excuse us, uh, Luis. Sheridan, you're doing the right thing. I hope so, because it's killing me. You know, just a little while ago in the library, Antonio told me how happy he is. That even though he could die young, all his dreams have come true because he met you. Really? He said that? Yeah. He loves you with all his heart, Sheridan. And I know how you feel for Louise. It doesn't matter. Louise has moved on with Beth. Antonio never has to know how much I really love his brother. So what are we doing out here? I didn't want Sheridan or Mama to hear what I have to say. Sounds heavy duty. Yeah, it is. See, Sheridan told me the truth. She told me what the two of you have been hiding from me for the past few weeks. She did? Are you okay with that? Well, I wasn't at first, but... <laughs> You know, that's only natural under the circumstances, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Look, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Yeah, I know. I know, believe me, I don't want to die. I, you know, I just found the woman in my dreams. I want to live forever, but I guess that's not in the cards, huh? And it's just like, I told Mama I'm not going to complain, and I also told her that I was very lucky to be able to have Sheridan in my life as much as I have and to be able to have her in my life for as long as I live. Is that all Sheridan told you? What else would she tell me? Is there something else you guys are hiding from me? No. No, of course not. I still cannot believe that Luis has moved on with Beth. Well, he has, and that's that. I saw them making love with my own eyes. No matter how much it hurts, I have to accept that this is what Luis wants. Hey. I'm really sorry. Thanks, bro. Hey, just because I got some bad news, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop living my life. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I'm gonna live my life to the fullest, whatever time I have left. I'm gonna get married to Sheridan as soon as I can, and I'm gonna be the best husband that I can until I breathe my last breath. Hey, my big bad cop brother's not going soft hey. on me, is he? You should just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good knowing you care, Luis. That was another one of my dreams came true, you know, having you and the rest of the family back in my life. I just want you to know how much it means to me. And the best part of it is I get to see you as content and as happy as I am. <laughs> Beth is a beautiful person. Yeah. And she is going to make you a wonderful wife. In fact, that's, um, that's part of the reason that I asked you to come out here. I wanted to know if you and uh, Beth would take care of Sheridan after I'm gone. Me and Beth? Yeah. Yeah, Sheridan loves me so much, and I... I know she seems a lot stronger than she is sometimes, but... She is gonna need all of her family and friends around her. I would really feel great about it if you and Beth would take care of her when I'm gone and help her manage it. Yeah, of course. I, 
I'm, I didn't hear you. I promise. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thanks from the bottom of my heart. Why do you keep torturing yourself like this, Teresa? God already granted you one miracle tonight by saving your little baby's life. I know. I got some nerve being so greedy, don't I? <laughs> Try to focus on your blessings, okay? Not what you can't have. My baby is my life, Whitney. And so is Ethan. I know it's futile to keep wishing for the impossible, but I can't help it. You know, I have dreamed of having a life with Ethan ever since I can remember. I know that uh, you're going to think this sounds really crazy, but I keep thinking that when it really gets down to it, Ethan's not going to be able to propose to Gwen. Teresa. No, at the last second, he's going to realize that he loves me too much to spend the rest of his life with anyone else. And he is going to ask me to be his wife, Whitney. No, no, anything but that holy water. Who are you? Your voice sounds so familiar. No matter your mortal name, you are the personification of evil. Goodness will prevail. Want to bet, Father Three Blind Mice? Whoever you are, you don't stand a chance with the good people of Harmony. I'm going to the chapel to pray for the triumph of good over evil. think I don't know what you two have been up to. We've been having fun. I'm waiting for your thank you. I've scored more points for our team today than you've scored in centuries. Yeah, well, the dark side doesn't need you or me to help keep Charity and Miguel apart. <laughs> okay, ben, it may be a novice, but she's creating havoc aplenty all on her own. Blame me all you want, Mother. I am not guilty of anything. Uh, excuse me. I should get back to charity. I, I need to straighten some things out. How is she, Dr. Russell? She's still a little shaky. I need to know, Miguel. Did you or did you not sleep with Kay? No. No, I didn't. And you can't be worrying about something that never happened. Well, I am really not in the mood to drink champagne anymore, so how about I get us a couple of nightcaps to bring upstairs? Sounds good. I'll wait for you right here. Okay. <sighs> Teresa. <sighs> Looks like Gwen and Ethan have been celebrating something. He must have proposed to her after all. Gwen's probably upstairs right now showing her mother her new ring. You know, uh, I should have expected it, but something kept telling me that Ethan would come to his senses before it was too late. What am I going to do, Whitney? Well, a really mature person would offer their congratulations. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. 
You know, what if Gwen comes down to gloat? So what? Show her what you're made of, Teresa. Be gracious to her. Smile and say you wish them the best. And then you can cry in your room later. You're right. It's the least I can do for Ethan. Do you want me to come with you? No. I have to do this by myself. Well, good luck, okay? All right. <sighs> Teresa, what are you doing here? you have some big news for me, Ethan. So, is everything all right? Everything's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to Luis about a couple of things. You know, it's getting late. Why don't you go back to the cottage? Without you? I just have a couple of errands around. I won't be long. But... I really? I'll be okay. I'll be there shortly, okay? Why don't I walk you out, Mia? Mom, I'm a big boy. I can... Don't you? All right. If you insist. Dirty work and you give Kay Bennett all the credit. Not my words. That girl has an evil streak in her a mile wide. Give your mother a chance, Kay. Right? It's not that she wants to blame you for a charity. She's but... got you doubting me now, too, doesn't she, Dad? <laughs> well, you know what? I don't care anymore. I don't give a damn if either of you believe me or not. Well, I gave her a sedative. Hopefully she'll get some sleep. But we are all going to have to be much more vigilant about making sure she doesn't get upset. I swear, I don't know how it happened, but I will make sure that nothing else shakes her up. Well, I won't either. Gosh. What did I tell you? <laughs> that girl is positively evil. Can I spend the night in Charity's room? I don't want her to be alone. If I could just grab a shower somewhere, I'd be all set. You could go back to our place. No, better yet, Miguel, use the, the on-call room at the hospital. I'm sure the staff won't mind. Okay, thanks. Hey, I'm sure she's gonna be fine. the time, I might as well commit the crime. Right? Looks like Miguel could use a little help.
Okay. You could learn a thing or two from Kay Bennett. Give me a break. I was born evil. She's a civilian. Don't underestimate her. What Kay wants, Kay usually gets. She wants. Miguel. Charity's gonna lose. Charity's gonna lose. Charity's gonna lose. Are you missing three middle patients? It's okay, Ethan. Just tell me. I can handle it. Oh my god. Ethan didn't give her the ring. It's okay. Now you're allowed to be upset. The man you love is gonna die. You don't understand. Is that, is that what you think? You know, it kills me to know that my brother doesn't have much longer to live. You know, I can't even imagine what the fear of losing him is like to you. You know, I can't bear the thought of his time running out. But that's not why I'm upset. I'm upset because the man that I fear losing most, the man that I love with all of my heart and soul, isn't Antonio. It's you. 